You are right? Yeah, I just don't want to let go. <laughs> oh, Jesus, you are right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Sammy Hitchke fishing adventure. Joined by the great Sean Whale today. Fish on, mate, fish on. And look, he's about to land his first and only fish of the day. <laughs> no, we are, we've got a pretty cool plan of attack. We're out off the Gold Coast at 80 metres. We're just jigging some live baits, and the plan is to catch some marlin on liveies. Yeah. Now, Sean and I have been lucky enough to do a bit of game fishing already this summer. It is a cracker season for it. You got anything to add, mate? That's only, only, only got one bait, so that'll be mine. <laughs> No, no. Like, I'll, take, bait. I'll take him. But I reckon, look, there's a lot of fish around. I've already marked about three. I actually drove away from a few fish <laughs> just so we could catch bait so we didn't lose our bait jigs to Marlin. But um, oh, a lot of bait in the sounder. It's going to be a good day, there's mate. I've got a lot of bait in the sounder. Now, one thing I will say is there's a bit of a competition on today. You guys who watch the show pretty frequently might remember Sean. Uh, cleaned me up about this time last year chasing marlin on live baits. Now this is the I only just, time... I just call that a regular day of fishing in my books, mate. Shush. <laughs> it was the only time Sean has ever kept me from catching a fish. I jigged some bait and that was it. Didn't land a, uh, a good fish all day. He managed two marlin on a wahoo. So I got well and truly pants. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna redeem myself today. It's a battle. And uh, I think the first step, we got to get some more liveies because... Yeah. That's mine. <laughs> you wish, mate, you wish. It's going to be good fun, guys. I'm going to go through all the gear we use at the end of the show, too, in the Tackle Talk, so make sure you stay tuned for that. First steps first, let's uh, let's get connected to a pointy face. Yep, won't take long. And the dirty tactics are already at play. He's got a, he's got a bait rig before I can even get the boat out of gear. That's typical whale tactics, that is. Good decky, mate. Good decky, typical whale tactics. And you stole me your rubber band, too, you bastard. Oh no, he didn't. He, he's, he's a good decky. The live baits we're using are big slimy mackerel. We'll have a go at that for a bait. That's a good bit of good bit of marlin food that is. Rig them up like so, rubber band through the nose. Twist it around a few times. And then back like that. You notice that? So that's an 8 circle hook, demon circle, light gauge. Absolutely perfect for this style of fishing, but we'll chat about that more later. Let's get some baits down there first. How deep are you going, Sean? Um, I'm about 30 at the moment. 30, there's one going down there now. Now you see on the sounder here, guys, that's the, the bait we're fishing. The marlin will, will sit around those bait schools and feed pretty well all day. So they have to come out. So you uh, get your bait into that zone and you're in with a shot. Oh, my bait just went a little bit crazy then. So always good to get the first bait in the water. Sean O's still jigging. Oh, he's just been bit. That, that, that sounded like a bite. Did I? Maybe. Oh, I've got bait. Oh, it's all happening. Oh no. Are you getting bit? Um, not really. Typical whale tactics, try and distract me. Are you getting bit? Yeah. And that could... Oh. I think so. Maybe not. Nah. So the reports that we've been getting, we were lucky enough to fish out here recently. The fish are ranging from sizes from about 10 kilos through to uh, well and truly over 100. So you do have to be kind of prepared for a bit of anything. Uh, but the one thing that can be said is there's been some really good numbers around, which is great to see. Uh, the day that we went out, we managed five from 10 hookups, which is pretty damn fine marlin fishing in anyone's books. So it'd be really good to show you a couple today. The weather's quite nice at the moment. We don't have all day, unfortunately. The weather turns uh, turns a bit sour on um, about lunchtime. So, yeah, if we can get it done nice and early in the morning, and I can catch probably four to Sean's none, that would be fantastic. Never gonna happen, mate. Never gonna happen. He reckons it's going to happen. I can feel it in my nuggets. 
you would have heard Sean I say when we pulled up we marked two mile and I'll include the screenshot I don't know if I've got both of them there definitely got one but we the first patch of bait we pulled up on there was a mile in there and in uh as is always the way we didn't have a live bait between us so had to get some bait first if you drop your bait jig down on that bait with that mile around that every chance he's just going to nip nick him off your uh your bait jig and, and and give you a touch up so we drove away we just got to find him again he'll be around he'll be doing the laps these pillies or something yeah pillies oh stop it i've got a um hang on we'll put them straight in a zippy guys if you're going to come out here be prepared have a go at what sean's just pulled up and make every snapper some would say vermin but every snapper fisherman blow their bickies oh no that's a good looking pilchard i think there's a few more of them as well the more the merrier there you go straight on the eye put, oh, i wouldn't put them away too quick but... i'll leave it here for you well guys there's a marlin there possibly two Shawno's at 35, he should be getting a bite very shortly. Yeah, he's feeling nervous. There he goes. You getting bit? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna get bit in a sec. He's just really nervous. Shawno, possibly getting bit. I think I'm bit. Me too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yep, Fish on. on. You on? Yeah. Doubles. There we go. Guys, there's a double hookup. Woo! It's coming up. Oh, we're going to have to watch each other here. Have we got the same fish? I don't know. That'd be quite a funny. Not that funny. Would be quite funny. Twins. Yes. 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 Yeah, yes. This is a bit of drama. I hope we've got two different fish. Oh, hang on. Yours. You still got yours? Yeah. Getting a bit of angle here. I did, be... I did leave it a while. I, I, they're separate. No, they're, they're, they're separate. They're yeah. separate. Do you want to do a little boat swappy? I think I'll have to in a sec. Well, this is going to be fun. You may as well, if you're going to do it, you may as well hook two at once. Here we go over me. We were talking about doubles, weren't we? We were talking about yeah, doubles. Oh. There he is. He's a good fish. Yeah, he's a good fish too. Like big? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, there's Sean's. Oh, no, it's not that big. That's, he's, we're, nearly, we're nearly at him. Here we go. Mine's about to come up now. Little sneaky double. Oh, <laughs> there's mine. There's definitely two. Look at the fin. It's just here. I'm going to lead this. <laughs> Look, he's right there. Well, that was pretty cool. Guys, we've got a double hookup. And, oh, mine's having a bit of a aerial look, display. Look, this one hasn't done anything yet. You yeah. just tag him. Sean is here. just here. I'm on the leader. I just, I feel like he's not done I yet. don't think he's done anything. He's little. He's a little baby one. There he goes. He's, he's uh, going to end up in the boat with us. He knows he's hooked now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm, like, I'm on the, like, I'm on the leader. Sean <laughs> in all sorts here. This fish doesn't even know it's hooked, I don't think. I've got a pair of gloves. Hey, do you want to just grab him? <laughs> I've got a pair of gloves. I'm going to try and relate to this one real quick. Oh, look at the colours on him. Oh, that's a nice, cute little fish. We're going to wear this in the boat for sure. Oh, we're dead. We are definitely dead. I wish. There he comes, look. There he goes. Do a bit of that. That's a go. Well, that's good fun, isn't it? That is. That is good fun. You couldn't just let me get one ahead. I got bit first. Well, I don't know about that, because I, I think I free sport him a fair bit. No, you don't know anything. I, do, I, I definitely hooked up first, and whoever leaders their fish first actually wins. It's On the count, that's comp rules. Yeah, it is. Mojo, yeah. Mojo hooked up. <laughs> oh no. Oh yes. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. That is very cool. Guys, it is a bit hard to film the old double hookup. 
trying to get that camera around so Sean O gets some airtime. If he doesn't, look, it's not the end of the world. He's um he's pretty rough to look at. But one thing I will say is you'll notice I've got a, uh, a pretty flash looking rod here, which I will talk about. There it goes. In, oh, there's jumping. He's, you've interrupted my spiel. But this is possibly the flashiest rod I own. I've got a lot of rods, I will admit that. I've always subscribed to the theory that you can't play a game of golf with one, one club. And this guy here is my best club. This is uh, one that it only comes out on special occasions. Should be sitting above the uh, mantelpiece instead of out here and into it, but it's always good to put a bend in. It's a, uh, it's a very nice bit of kit. Now, Sean is trying to stitch me up. Get your own side of the boat. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Just lead and fish around. Whoa. Well, that's just good fun, isn't it? It is just, just honest good fun. Just honest good fun. Bit of drama. Ah, uh, yes. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> is it a bigger one? Oh, yeah, mine's a bit better. I wouldn't say better, I said bigger. I said better. How's that though? Pretty well simultaneous bite. How you going? Are you ready? Yeah. This will be good. I'm going to watch Sean get uh, speared in the face here. How's the colours on him? I know. He's proper lit up. That's awesome. You are right? Yeah. I just don't want to let go. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You are right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glad I got that on camera. He tried no. to kill you. Yeah, he came in pretty hot. Let's get Did he yours. touch you? No. no, no, no. I don't know how he missed. I saw, a, I saw the bill there, though. <laughs> got the old wide frame on that one. Well, I think we'll call that a win. What, did you just snap the hook, did you? Just the hook, yeah. Yeah, nice. Well, look, we're calling that one a win. You touch the leader, that's a... Uh, when you're one set of hands up, or well, you're pretty well solo set of hands. That'll do. That will do it. And that's going to make for a nice little bit of footage, Sean O. Might even call that in the video. The day Sean O almost died. <laughs> Good nearly got the spearage. <laughs> but on a serious note, guys, um, it is worth pointing out Sean's done a fair bit of that. So he does have a semi-good idea what he's doing. <laughs> you do really have to be on your toes and aware of what those fish do because they are sharp. They are angry, they will definitely pierce the skin and do some damage. So if you are going to leader a fish, make sure you kind of got your wits about you, you're ready for what's coming, and uh, you can move out of the way if you need be. Oh, there he is there. Woo! He's a nice fish too. Yeah. He's a bit bigger. A little bit bigger, yeah. What do you reckon? Don't jump. You're up. <laughs> you go to the gym this morning? Don't need to. Right. There's the marlin. Have a go at that. Sean, what's your estimate in size? Oh, I'm going to say. A healthy fish. Yeah, is that a. What is that? They're uh, anchor worms. That's pretty wild. They're parasites there. Those things are parasites. They kind of look like tags, but they're called like an anchor worm or something like that. That's a beautiful fish though. Nice thick fish. He played up too. A few yeah. nice jumps. He's nice and healthy. Lit up like a Christmas tree as well. Grab those rest of those things. They're probably not good for him. You've got the gloves on. I don't really want to touch them. Beautiful black marlin. That is a great fish. That's the size you want to. I'm going to guess about 30 kilos, 35 kilos. And what would you say in yours was? About 20? Yeah, if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah you weren't. Yeah, they're the ones you want, the small ones. He's got a lot of life in him. He's swimming beautifully. That's what you want. And that's why I like using this heavier gear, which I'll talk about later, is you can kind of bully these fish in a bit quicker than the lighter gear. Get them in in good condition. If you're not going to take one for a feed, get them in nice and quick and release them. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. He's still got plenty of life. He's got a lot of go in him. I reckon send him, mate. You happy? Yep, I'm happy. 
Got one in first, folks. I reckon leave us a comment below who just won that round. I think it was me, no doubt. Yeah, because a lot of the fishing comps I've been in, it's definitely who caught it first and not whose was the biggest. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I do know. Yeah. You guys know well, as well. I reckon we get another one. Though. I reckon we catch another one and I'll just win on numbers alone. It'll be way easier. That's a good start though. Yep. Two fish, one drift, double hookup. Ought to start the morning, but we've got plenty more left in us. We've got two, so. two more baits there. Easy, mate. Two more marlin. Let's do it. Oh, we're just coming onto the bait as well. That bait looks like it is scared. Looks like it is not stoked. Because Marl on the Martian is there. Coming up. Big Very flat liner. Sharky boy. Uh, you don't know. Uh, probably a Marlin. A bit of arch about him. I think it'd come up though to see a bait 20 up. There you go. You got it? Yep. There we go. Took a little while to get that last hook up. He's coming up? Oh yeah. He was coming up and he's coming up fast. Oh yeah, he's gonna look at that. Out over there. there he is. <laughs> yes. Go son. <laughs> Oh, we might get speared here. Oh, oh dear. Ah, oh, he's good. He's going the other way. <laughs> yeah. That's an aerial display. Yes. How good is that? Here's a little idea of what's going on. He is taking some line. But we're on. You're on? We are on. I'm calling a shark. Sure knows call for a shark. I reckon it could just be the live bait playing up a little. Well, we marked that fish. It was sitting down about 70 metres. We're in 80 metres at the moment. We were having the debate whether it was a shark or a marlin. And uh, credit where credit's due. I said, if it's a marlin, it'll definitely come up. <laughs> it'll go. definitely come up and eat it. And sure enough, no sooner had I, <laughs> definitely me, said it, uh, my rod started going off. And look, skip forward a minute and a half, and here we are. Here we are. Attached to number three of the day. Here we go. He should be out the back there. He's going to go. There he is. Woohoohoo! How's the air? This guy's having a real good aerial display. Oh, it does not get any better than this. That is pretty cool, man. Now, the advantage of circle hooks, like the ones we're using, the demons, is they just roll into the corner of the mouth. And he's just going back down. And you can kind of run up on them like we've just done there without... Um, without too much drama. That hook's probably not going to come out. Famous last words. Let's see if we can coax him to come up for a, a little slam dunk contest. There you go, he's shaking his head. He's coming up, mate. That's what they do. There he goes. Sorry, Sammy. Bigger than the other one? Yeah. Tag shot. Oh, he's got a tag in it. Has he's it? got a tag. Yeah. In his tail. I'm sure I just saw a tag. I want to see where that tag is. Imagine if it was one of yours. That'd be pretty cool. I'm sure he had one in his tail. This would be my first tag fish if it is. I get a certificate, don't I? Yep. Woohoo! So 
sometimes you just got to do it yourself, guys. <laughs> it's taking too long, I'm gonna have a sandwich. Sean sure, Wales going catabolic. Are you sure this isn't bigger? Yeah, it could be. It was a, it's a big fish. I'm hopeless at guessing their weight. Everyone always goes heavier than me when we're guessing fish's weight for marlin. Like a lot of people would call that 60. Gantry. I'm going to maintain 45 now. It's grown a little bit. It's a big fish. It's not small. I'll just put this in the holder and let him sort himself out when we have a lunch yeah, break. Yeah, have some lunch. This guy's making me work for it. Yeah, Tommy's just done something. Had to run his mouth. Listen here. <laughs> Can we call it for a grander yet? <laughs> well, guys, this fight's probably been going more than half, wouldn't you say? I'd say at least. Oh, it is definitely because it's when I looked at it was nine nine thirteen when I looked at the clock, and it is no longer nine thirteen. <laughs> it is. Oh. Inching him up though, that's good. We'll have him. I can see the double. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Circle hook in the corner of the mouth. It's not a stripe. Yeah, it's got is a tag it? in it. Hey? It's got a tag in it. And we got him. Just putting that boat in gear. It's got a game fish. We got a tag marlin here. That is a game fish tag. All right. Well, guys, that one made us work for it. Have a go at that. Much bigger fish. They're definitely a bigger fish. What would you call that for, Sean? Oh, I'm going to say 50. 50. And he uh, he threw his weight around something hardcore. But the cool part is, apart from those colours that he's throwing up, is it's actually got a tag in it. You'll see there that yellow thing sticking out of the back of his tail. There, that is a a game fish tag so we're going to record the numbers off that and we'll be able to um to see where he's come from or who caught him last that's pretty cool this is my first tagged fish recapture that's pretty pretty cool circle hook in the mouth there i'll get you the uh the hooker that's the beauty of circle hooks there it is there i just see if i can put the colors on him there we go hooks out and that fish he'll be happy as larry now that's why you use circle hooks. J hooks end up in the guts down here. No good for anyone. Circle hook in the corner of the mouth. He's going to release an absolute treat. Look at those colours. He is, he is stoked to be here. Three marlin before 10 o'clock in the morning is a pretty good morning indeed. Uh, I'd love to say how good is this and how easy was that, but I think sometimes you just get lucky. And uh, we're definitely in the middle of a red hot marlin bite off the Gold Coast at the moment. But uh, this guy is ready to go. He's got some strong tail beats. He fought hard, deserves to go back and do it all again. And maybe for a third time seeing his tag. Right on, mate. Catch you later. Oh. Woo. There he goes. Ah, I'm tired now. Woo. Gonna need a sandwich. All right, guys, that was a pretty awesome morning session. Unfortunately, we do have to head back in now. It's uh, coming up to 10 o'clock. We've got places to be, people to talk to, and um, I don't have another one to go after that. But. Uh, while we're cruising in, I'm just going to show you a couple of things that are, I'm not just going to say crucial, but really nice to have if you're going to do this style of live baiting with the big slimies for the marlin. And the first cab off the rank for that is a big live well. Lucky enough in this boat to have quite a sizable size live well. And while there's some dead slimies in there, that's the ones we've um, previously used for bait and uh, have, have done their time. A big live well, particularly a round one, will keep your slimies pretty happy and healthy and uh, all your hard-earned baits will be ready to rock and roll when their time comes up. A little rigging station to rig your live baits is always handy. And also bait jigging rods, you want to have a couple of them ready to rock and roll so you can jig bait and still fish with your heavy gear. And a big pair of gloves if you want to grab onto a marlin's bill and get the hook out, which I really do recommend. They've got quite an abrasive bill, so make sure you've got a set of gloves so you don't tear your hands up. But all the tackle and all that sort of stuff I will talk about when we get home in the tackle tour. For now, we're gonna shoot off, cover some Ks, and uh, get back to the ramp. That was a good morning. What do you reckon, Shauno? Mate, all time. Any day you can come out and catch one marlin, it's a fantastic day. Catch three, 
including a double hook up. What a good morning, mate. Good morning. Made even better by the fact that I caught two and <laughs> you caught one. Thank goodness you caught that last one too. That looked like hard work. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that one I wouldn't wish upon anyone. Stayed hard, stayed deep and uh, fought hard. But we got to go. And uh, that was good, good fun. In my opinion, you're absolutely crazy if you don't bring out a Ziploc bag and keep a few of these delicious looking baits for use at a different time. These big slimies will turn into, into tow baits, tow them for Spanish mackerel. And then, oh, pretty well the same with these guys here, or use them for, uh, for tailor, sorry. They make great tailor bait as well. But with such awesome fresh baits like that that you can catch yourself, you would be hard, look at that. As if that's not going to get munched by a mackerel or cut in half, use it as tailor bait. Absolutely beautiful bait. Absolutely beautiful. You can't let these opportunities go to waste. If you are going to do it, make sure you treat your baits with respect. These will go straight on ice with the pillies that I got earlier in the day. The straighter you can keep them better. No one wants a bent bait. Straight on the ice. Look at that. Some beautiful pillies there as well. See? It's not all game fishing. A bit of bait collecting as well. Welcome to the Tackle Talk section of the video, guys. Now, I did get in trouble in a previous episode for not doing this with a beer. Um, and look, I don't like conflict, so if you're watching with one, even if you're not, Cheers to you guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, where will I not knock this over? Right, marlin on live baits. It's actually not as intimidating as you may think. Now let's start at the start. You've marked your bait, now you've got to catch it. I like to use just a normal, simple bait jig. That is a size six. Now it is important to use a larger size bait jig because the bait you're trying to jig is quite large. If you use the tiny little ones, They'll just pull them out of their mouths because they actually fight quite hard uh, and you won't get a good hook up and it's just a pain in the bum. Now I like to tie up a heap of rigs before I go because there can be a lot of sharks in the area, wahoo come through and bite you off. Uh, usually I'll change rigs after each fish. They tend to scuff up your leader a fair bit so have a few tied up ready to rock and roll. I keep them in a little Ziploc bag so they don't get tangled up in your, in your tackle box. The hooks we're using are Aido Light Gauge Circle Demons. These guys here, and these are absolutely, I don't know if they were designed for this purpose, but they are absolutely perfect for it. That's them there, nice light gauge, so they set really easily, roll into the corner of the mouth, and you're ready to rock and roll. Now, leader-wise, um, look, there's a couple of ways you can go about it. If this is your first marlin, and you just want to catch one, go heavy. These things are not leader shy. So 120 pound, I prefer the uh, like shock leader nylon, in, as opposed to, fluorocarbon, I find it a bit easier to work with. It sits The bait sits a bit more naturally. It's a little more uh, supple than a fluorocarbon. And I haven't found it any less abrasion resistant. I like to run about three to three and a half meters of leader. Um, at the top here, I tie a loop with a figure eight knot. And I leave a nice long tag on that just in case it starts to slip. You've still got plenty to play with. Now down the bottom end where we got our hook, we snell it onto our demon circle like so. So you want to go through the eye from the inside and do your snell that way. Uh, I'm not exactly sure on the science of why it works better to go through the eye rather than have an offset eye, uh, but a lot of the marlin guys swear by this method and reckon it gives a heap better hookup rate in the corner of the mouth as opposed to gut hooking them. So if they reckon it works, I'm more than happy to follow their lead. They've probably put a lot more thought into it than I. Now once you're ready to rock and roll, you'll need to attach your sinker. Now you would have seen we use some pretty cool looking sinkers. Uh, these ones are actually coated in glow paint. Now, is this essential? Definitely not. Does it help? It might do. They stand out a bit more underwater, so it might just give that, that predatory fish uh, something to reference, and then it sees your bait from there. If anything, uh, what I found is you can actually see these in the water while you're fighting your fish, so it actually acts as like a indicator as to where your fish is. So when it gets close to the boat, you can see that sinker cruising around, and you know exactly where your fish is, even if you can't see it. Uh, then to attach it to your rig, 
you want to put it in this loop here. So you just pinch it, thread it through the hole in your sinker, and that's where we attach our snap clip. Obviously we close that. That's what your rig will look like. That sinker is restrained between your figure eight knot and your snap swivel. Uh, and then above my snap swivel, I like to run a big bead just so you don't wind it into the, uh, the tip of your rod. I just like to run a nice little ball bearing swivel. Uh, anything in that 70 to 100 pound range should be perfect for it. Now you would have seen how I attached the slimy mackerel in the video, but I'll run through it again really quickly. First of all, you get your rubber band and just loop it onto the gape of your hook so it's attached like that. Bait needle goes through the fish's nose, just under the hard part of his nose in that soft section there. Pull your rubber band through, loop your hook rack back round and grab the other side, spin it round, and then go under all those spins, and that gives you plenty of hook exposure once the marlin takes the bait. Now outfit wise, this is where there's gonna be some very differing opinions. Uh, a lot of the game fishing lads, they like to use light gear, eight kilos, 15 kilos, all that sort of stuff. Personally, I just like to get the job done. You would have seen I had this bad boy here. Now, let's talk about this rod first. This is the Mona Lisa of rods. This is probably the best rod in my quiver. If, uh, if this rod was a girlfriend, this is the one you'd take home to your mum. This is a 15 kilo Wilson Venom game. It is an absolute piece of art. These things are amazing to fish with. They've got all the best quality components money can buy. They are just absolutely beautiful rods. I don't say that very often, but it is a beautiful rod. Still plenty of fun on the smaller marlin, but if you do have a freight train at your live bait, so you can dish out plenty of hurt with this as well. Now, I've got that matched with a Tyranos 12. That's the smallest of my trolling reels, and that's got 50 pound braid backing, about 40 meters of 24 kilo mono on top, and then it's got an 80 pound wind on leader, which is about four and a half meters, meters long. So that outfit there, this is my baby. Uh, I don't know what else to say. It is just, it's a pleasure to fish with it. Now, obviously I wouldn't expect everyone to run out and grab one of these rods. They are truly epic bits of kit, but they do have a price tag to match. So I thought I'd run through the outfit I took out for Shauno to use as well. Now that's got the same Tyranos 12 as this setup here. It's rigged exactly the same, uh, same backing, same mono, same wind on but the rod is a little bit different. This is a Wilson Venom Ocean Warrior. This is a 15 kilo stroker. And again, another beautiful rod. Any Venom is a good rod. This one in particular has got a nice sensitive tip, plenty of power in that midsection there, like all good Venoms, and is pretty well perfect for any offshore application, live baiting, pelagic trolling, all those sorts of things. And that's all there is to it, guys. You've got no excuses. Get out there, bend a rod on one, and enjoy these epic sport fish while they are still around. Now, couple little things to address before we head off. A few days after filming this, we ticked over the 50K subscriber mark. So I wanted to say a massive thank you to all you guys who have subscribed and tune in week in, week out. You guys are what make this channel possible and I am so grateful for your support. You guys are epic and I appreciate you all. So cheers to you guys. Of course, we should also thank my super decky for the day, Shauno. You can catch him in full flight every Thursday on his channel, Full Drive 24-7. So make sure you head over and check that out as well. Guys, if you want to have a look at any of the gear I used on today's video, make sure you head over to wilsonfishing.com. They've got all this tackle and more to get you out there and into a few. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do so on my website, www.sammyhitskyfishing.com. I've got plenty of merch available for you guys, so head over there, check it out, and if you see something that tickles your fancy, grab it, and I'll ship it out to you ASAP. Guys, thank you very much for tuning into the video. If you did like or learn something, please hit the like button, leave us a comment below, and if you're new to the channel, if this is your first Sammy video, make sure you subscribe, because there's new fishing action every single Sunday. I'd hate for you to miss some. Guys, thank you very much for sharing in this 50K milestone. This one's for you guys, and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky Fishing Adventure. Cheers.